you don't run fuel line close to a header. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see that properly. That's a return line. That's coming. That's coming straight from the regulator, the bottom of the regulator. You see that right there? That's why I run them through the tunnel of the car. Look at this. That's fucking bad news. This guy kind of caught fire. That would have sucked. Yeah. So guys, John here from John's Motorsports with this beautiful 68 Mustang. So it's got fast EFI, it's got a 347 Schroeper, a little Windsor. And what we're doing here is uh, fixing the issues the car has. They blew the first motor. Um, unfortunately, they were uh, using this fuel system, the stock tank looks like. And they did the mistake of putting the pump above the tank. So if you see this here, the pump needs to pull fuel from the bottom of the tank here. So it, it works to start the car, make it run, but it's not going to make it... Uh, have the volume it needs when you go full throttle. So this is a beautiful car. A lot of money is spent on it. The wheels are HREs. It's just a beautiful car. Um, so yeah, so we did a, it was running Pig Rich too because um, it looks like when they installed it, they didn't install the actual resistor. There's a, spe a special resistor that you put on the uh, on the taxon coming off of the off the coil, okay, to give the ECU, the fast EFI ECU, a, uh, a, a proper clean signal in order for it to adjust itself for, uh, for its AFR. So the car was pig rich all the time, we're just going through plugs, just ridiculous. Let me turn down the radio here real quick. So what we've done here is we've got a tank, which basically uh, brings you to the type of tank where you're basically taking fuel from the top of the tank. So you're something it this way, you've got one for the center, and this is the, this is the, goes to the back of the car to fill the tank, right? These old school cars had uh, the gas cap at the back of the, uh, the trunk. So basically what we're doing here now is, uh, we fixed, there's also a vent, a, a particular vent. Uh, because it's EFI, it's gonna have more pressure, so it's gonna need a little bit of a better vent. I didn't use this clamp, I used the fuel injection clamp. That's the sender for the uh, for the fuel level. Uh, so here's the actual pump assembly assembled, like in the instructions it says. It says I, used, I used a specific uh, fuel injection clamp here. This one looks pretty tight, so I'm not worried about it, so I left it. This is the return, okay? And now here you've got two, an in and an out. So basically this is your in, this is basically your um, your outlet, this is your inlet coming back, and this is for the vent. So what I've done here is I've actually gotten uh, and fitting specific ones. And what we're doing here now is we're gonna put these on here. Especially when you're doing fuel fittings like this, you wanna use both Teflon tape and the paste. So put the tape on first and then the paste, and screw those in nice and tight and then you'll be ready to accept your standard brass fittings, 37 degree AM fittings. Um, you know, with a good hose, we're gonna use a good uh, continental fuel injection hose here, right to feed. And what's gonna happen here is that it looks like they've already taken the return, they put it through the floor, which they have here, if you see it right here, they've gone through the floor here, but if there's nothing here, there's no grommet, it's just a grommet. So that's not the best way to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that and what I've got is a couple of bulkheads. I gotta go to the fitting guy right now because I'm missing quite a few of these. And this is basically a bulkhead uh, fitting. So all it is is basically uh, you know, uh, a 6 in on one end, a 6 in on the other end. And what you'll do is you, uh, you take this, put this through the hole on the floor, tighten it down, and once it's tight, you've got you know, ANs for each side. And your hose to your uh, to your outlet, and this is through the floor, and it's nice and safe and secure. You don't have to worry about a, a fuel line tearing itself up against the bodywork. So I'm gonna do this, and I gotta run. I only got two of these, so I gotta go get. I've got like six that I ordered. I gotta get them from the shop. And um, these are press-on fittings. They usually don't leak and don't smell, but it's up to you. You can put a clamp on top afterwards. But if you have the right hoses, it sh you should need it. It won't smell. Even at 100 PSI, these are not coming out of that uh, that um, continental hose. So yeah, so it's got some cork gaskets here. I'm not crazy about these, but we're going to put some silicone gasket maker on each side too. And on the screws, when we put it down, that's the new... Uh... Sorry about the compressor turn on. The new fill, uh, the filled uh, cap. And then we have the... Uh... 
basically the uh, the fuel level sender. So if you see right here, it's pretty simple to do. Not a big deal. Just follow the instructions. Not a big deal. Just a simple, simple rheostat, you know, for fuel. Uh, what's coming out of this? I'm gonna check the uh, resistance on it too to make sure it's the same as what's in the car. Uh, but I'm gonna take that tank out first. So I've got the the O2, the wide band O2 in the back of it to make sure that the fast EFI is giving the right AFR and it's reading right and that the actual uh, sensor was still good. So I had it there. I fixed everything fine. I got it to idle. I got it to its 14.6, 14.7. It runs fine. Second, you put it in gear and give it a little bit of load. Whoop! It just dies. Why? Well, the reason is is because the pump is not able to supply the volume it needs in their load. So even putting it in drive, if you don't hold the revs up, pump can't supply the fuel. So once this is all installed and taken care of, I mean, it'll, it'll be just fine. I only have more than enough fuel. And we're going to verify everything. So I'm going to finish this up quick, quick, and uh, put everything in. And once it's in, I'll do another little video to show you guys how I did it and what I did and how I, how I put things together. And once that's done, then we'll go for a test drive and show you. It's my last day at work. I'm leaving for three weeks tomorrow. Uh, for Greece, but it's my last job and this guy's a cool guy. So I wanted to do the job for him and get it done He's a cool dude. He's, he's been he's been kicked around quite a bit uh, It actually says here here vent V for vent supply and return, which is awesome um, So long story short, yeah, man, I want to get it done give it to him So I mean he hasn't enjoyed this car at all like it, it's been in and out of garages for like two years Supposedly, I don't know what's going on and he's he's a pretty cool guy. He's got another one of these and he's in like a Shelby um, a Shelby, uh, the Gondon 66, you know, the Shelby car with a Trinity uh, 5.8 motor from a newer 1314 uh, Shelby. And he's put it all in this style car. It's, it's a beautiful car. I haven't seen it yet, but he, he's supposed to bring it to me. That one's been running around the garages left and right. They're having issues tuning it. I'm not sure something's up with the fuel system. But anyways, long story short, that's where we're at with this. I mean, I bet you he's going to like this car better than the other car. So I'm going to finish it up, make sure it runs the way it's supposed to. And then once it's done, uh, I'm gonna do another video for you guys. Hopefully by the end of the day. Right, so here we are after the install. Fuel lines are all installed. You guys can see that right there. I just started. It runs perfect. Run up the side of the firewall. One's a feed. One's a return. The one on this side here is the feed. The one on this is the return. So as they come over, as you guys can see here, get some bulkheads through the body of the car. Secured properly. So you got a feed here. A return here. They're both in. Nothing underneath. His fuel gauge didn't work. Now it does. Works beautifully. So he knows uh, exactly what fuel he needs. What the, how much fuel he's got. And basically, it's the. This is the tank, and it's a little bit dirty. I gotta clean it up. But um, basically, so you guys understand, it's uh, you know turning this from a regular seven eight psi uh, tank to a fuel injection tank which allows up to 70, 80 PSI. With, they had run the hose along the side. You see here, I removed everything and it just, no, this stock line is doing nothing. Um, and it's dangerous where they had it, one. Two, um, it just didn't have power. It didn't have power in the upper RPMs because it didn't have the volume. So you need to give it a proper pump. This is a 255 pump. So you can do whatever you want. You can even put a little blower on there. It's a 347 though, it'll have more than enough torque for what he wants to do. I mean, uh, he spent a lot of money. These nice wheels, HRE wheels. Sorry, I'm tired of looking at that video, but <clears throat> show you the tank from the top. You get a good idea exactly what's going on. Before it showed like, uh, I don't know, a quarter empty. Now it's past a half, which is exactly what it is. It's a 55 gallon tank, a uh, 55 liter tank. So, uh, 55 liters, it had at least, uh, yeah, about, you know, about 30 liters in it. So it's a little bit past uh, what it would have been uh, halfway. So yeah, some notifications. So here we go. So you got the filter right here. This is the filter that uh, Fast EFI supplies. Um, and basically, you have a three-eight fitting here with a you know adapted to a six inch. It's not leaking anywhere. It was leaking here a little. Let me fix it though. I'm gonna clean all this up. So you got the feed here. There's gonna be a board that comes across to protect all this. The wiring too. I'm gonna clean up. Put it away. Sender, ground for the sender to the pump, pump feed, ECU's controlling it, and here's the vent. I did the vent here like this on the side here. Should be higher up, but you know, not real you know place to put it. The vent is more to vent the tank um, and to help it. It's got a vented uh, cap too. Oh, I started with no cap. Um, and long story short is um, 
you know, when you're filling up the tank, you don't want it to be, you don't want to be the gas station and the fuel's coming back up on you. So that's the point of the vent. So you want to be able to put fuel in this and not have the fuel come back, you know, come back up on you when you're putting fuel. So that's how I did this. It looks pretty good. I mean, it's, you know, it's the first time I do it this way, but I mean, uh, you know, it's, 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 it works and it's safe and it's, you know, it does what it's supposed to do. And you shouldn't have any smell with these lines, especially. Um, you can do brass to aluminum, it's fine. As long as you don't do steel to aluminum, you're okay. I mean, it's close to the same uh, tolerance. Um, yeah, I mean, that filter's kind of tiny. I mean, I personally would have put a bigger filter in it, but um, it works just fine. Everything works on the dash, I'll show you guys. I've got the Y band connected to show uh, the 14.6 AFR. And basically, uh, let me just, sorry, you guys are seeing the floor a little here. Let me just turn the top of the key on. And then you can see, uh, you can see his fuel level is correct now. See, which makes complete sense because I just, you know, spilled all the, all the fuel out of the old tank. Uh, it starts right up, right on the first shot now, before it was a bitch. <laughs> Just a fuel so it'll be rich right off the bat, but then it, uh, it should correct and go 14.6. That's what we're commanding in the uh, in the tune. That thing right there. We're in the tailpipe, so it's going to be a little bit leaner off the start. But if you look at the uh, AFR on this, which is the actual sender, the actual um, the actual uh, live data. Oops, sorry, live data for this should show 14.6. There you go, so 14, 14.8. It's calling you 14, 15, 2, 14.6 there. This is saying for 14 to 59, but I've got it in a tailpipe and we've got some wind coming in, so it's going to inhale a little. But this is, uh, this is basically fixed. I'll show you guys under the hood. God, I'm tired. I'm leaving for Greece tomorrow. Three weeks. It's the last car, I just wanted to get it done. He's a really cool dude, so I wanted to give it to him. Um, yeah, so basically we're feeding here. As you can see, I've protected here with silicone. Protected, the return as well is protected right here. And it goes down, doesn't touch anywhere near a header. Doesn't touch anywhere near anywhere that it can heat up. The old line, man, you should see the old line. I think I did a little video. Well, I'll add it to this video. But if you look at the old, what did I put them in the trash? There was one line that was touching a header. That was the return line for these guys. Or no, the feed. And he would have ate it. Where is it? I think it's this one. Is it this one? Well, anyways, I took a little video before I took it off. But long story short, I mean, it was touching a header. It was heating up. So he would have ended up uh, catching fire with the old setup the way they had it, which is not the way to do it. But this is safe. I'm confident in it. It looks good. And it runs so much better, man. It runs so much better. 14.6, it doesn't smell. Before it was fucking pig rich. I mean, they hadn't put this, I gotta clean this up here. They had a resistor here for the uh, for the tax signal for the ECU. It's basically just a small little resistor. I know it's all loose here, but I'm gonna fix it up now. I'm gonna finish the car. But this is basically done. It's ready for a test drive. Tighten up the battery, get the plastic off of it, give it a good cleaning, make sure everything is nice and tidy. Put the carpet back in it. He gave me a huge list of stuff, but I'm only mandated to do certain things. I mean, because uh, it's not me that took on this car. It's another garage that did it. And basically, he came to me to make it run properly. So he gave me, a, the customer gave me a bunch of stuff. Well, my customer isn't really the uh, owner of the car. It's actually the garage that did the work. So I fixed what you know needed to be fixed. And then that's up to the customer later on. When I get back from vacation, if he wants to continue and do more stuff and make it really, really uh, perfect, you know? So, so that, uh, that wraps it up for this thing. I'm going to take it for a test spin. Hopefully I can make a video of that too. It's kind of late now and I'm leaving tomorrow, but I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to go for a test drive first. I think Here we are on the test drive. Let's see how, uh, how she does. Her fuel looks good. Let's make sure it doesn't stall, doesn't die. It does what it's supposed to. That really gets stuck. And have the customer get stuck. I'm pissed. Brakes feel a little bit weak. Good. 
complaints, but suspension wise, it sucks. But what I wanted to do, it's doing. The engine's running good, it's 347. It feels about, it feels still about, about 300 foot pounds. Ooh, that time it liked me. It almost let me loose. And yeah, far is right where I want it. A little bit rich right off the line, but.